all right guys so i'm back and right now we sitting at i gotta charge these batteries back up but uh we charging right now at 3.7 3700 well 38 now kilowatts 67 well it's going down maybe the sun going down oh y'all probably can't see that but anyway we charging at 31 amps right now it was at 70 amps but I guess the sun is get it's kind of cloudy outside so it's gonna be like that but yeah I'm trying to get these batteries back up to 100% I had charged the other day so that's the reason why they're pretty low right now I've been having them low for a minute because I've been trying to figure out how to get my panels just like up and I also burnt out the MPP solar inverter I was bringing in too many volts on the solar side and it just starts smoking. So I'm definitely finna get rid of that. I got the EG4 battery. I mean, EG4 inverters. I have two of them on the way. So by the time y'all see me on my next video, I'll be installing the EG4 batteries in parallel. Well, in series because it's only 120 output on the EG4 inverter. So I'm a double mine up and run both legs into a double throw breaker. Well, let me show y'all while I'm, let me see if I can get up here. So, I'm off grid, so, you know, I'm not, no electrician at all. This is just, you know, so if you know basic electric, you know about basic uh, electric, then you'll know how to hook this up. So, I'm going to run one lid here, and I'm going to run one lid there. So, one inverter will go on that side, and one inverter will go on that side, making this, 120 over here 120 over here and you would have to use a double throw breaker to run 220 and then a single breaker to run 120 so that's just how i'm hooking that up but i'm shooting this video so i can show y'all how much watts i was bringing in like i said i was bringing in 30 almost 4,000 watts but i'm gonna post pictures so y'all can see it i'm gonna post one right now and then i'm gonna post the other one. i think one was 38 and one was 4,000 so I'm gonna post those videos it look like the sun kind of trying to come back if y'all can see that the solar running back up real quick but yeah so another addition that I added was I added the flex max it never hurts to have one of these charges because you know like I say I went I was relying all on the charger inside this MPP solar and I blew it which I thought it would have had some type of, you know, breaker on it that a click before it, you know, run up the volts. I mean, that it stopped the 160 volts. I think I was bringing in 160 volts and this one only do 140 volts DC on the uh, solar side. So it blew out and, you know, I'm going to test it and see if I can fix it. You know, if I can, I can't. Like I said, I already bought two EG4 inverters to run the uh, Gill batteries, the light PO batteries combination gill like people like power batteries so this is what i'm gonna be charging my car on i'm only gonna be charging my car on the 13.5 kilowatts of the eg4 inverter that i have that's it and the grow watt 12k is only gonna run my house so maybe that's a mini split you know my washing dryers i do have a washing dryer this one is propane the heat the dryer is propane and this one electric of course so that's what I'm gonna be running and you know basically running my house now if I show y'all Let's go we bringing in the PV side we bringing in a hundred and around 120 volts 22 amps coming in right now because it's cloudy like I say 1.25 kilowatts 53.3 volts All right, so let's see what my house is using. This is typical every day. I run like a lamp I have a lot of natural light, so I don't have to run that much watts. But I got a refrigerator running. Actually, I got two refrigerators running right now. I run my big fan in the living room all the time. And like I said, I run lights constantly. I don't watch a lot of TV like that. But when I do, I do. But I just don't keep the TVs on when I'm not watching it, you know. So, but I do play the game. I do everything that normal people do. I get on the game. I have a PlayStation 5. Like I said, I watch TV at night. I do a lot of things. Don't, you know, I stay by myself. And then when my daughter come over, she also keeps the TV on 24-7. I understand, you know, with kids, they like to watch TV all day. So, you know, you can do that. And that's, all. you know, right now that's running off of these Gill batteries. The Gill 
light power combination batteries. I got everything hooked up on these. I do have these charged at 100%, but I'm gonna wait till my EG4 inverters come in and then I will put the UFO batteries, these 220K, back on the grow watt inverter. Let's see what we're bringing in now. I will put that back on that once them. So now we're getting about 3,600 3, kilowatts of solar. We were at 4,000 earlier, but you know, like I said, it's cloudy a little bit. So I'm charging this up so I can get my gill battery back up and start charging the Tesla. Yesterday I did charge the Tesla. I did put about 10K in the Tesla yesterday when I was at home and I was sitting at 30%, but I was bringing in about 3,500 watts. So I was using about 5K to charge the Tesla. It took about three hours to get it up to 50%. So it really works. And I haven't ran that test yet. So y'all just give me some time, man, to get these tests, you know, running first. This is just a test run. This is not the main run that I'm doing. I'm just showing y'all how I'm preparing to show y'all how this really works. So where I'm gonna be charging my car up every day home at home and you also got to keep in mind the eg4 inverters can bring in 500 volts 500 volts so i'm gonna hook both of the ground mounts that i have outside run them both in series all nine panels which is 18 panels in series and i'm gonna bring it straight into the eg4 inverters and i'm gonna see how many watts and what that gives me i'm also going to add more panels you know for the house because uh I want to run about, I want to have a house bringing in about 2,500 to three, I mean, yeah, 2,500 to 3,000 watts in on the house. And that'll keep these 20K batteries charged every day. So, you know, we can run the house off of that. And we can keep these ACs running in Houston. I mean, yeah, out here in Houston, or well, Texas, period. These houses are, I mean, these the heat is bad. Not the houses, the heat. The heat is bad. So we definitely gonna have to keep these ACs running. I don't have any ACs running right now because my house is pretty cool. I got that big fan running and it's keeping me cool for right now. But when it do get real hot over those three digit numbers, I will be keeping that AC on. And that's the reason why you want to have a hybrid system or maybe an off grid system that only runs your, your mini split, you know, buy a mini split, buy an off grid system and run that AC unit all day. And that way you can save on your electric bill because i'm sure a lot of people gonna see some high electric bills the you know in these days because it's hot outside it's very hot so this just was a video showing y'all you know what i'm preparing for you know i got to get these batteries back up see they only had 31 percent i definitely got to get it back up to um at least 50 percent you know and then get it up to 100 percent and another thing when i'm off and i'm running this tesla and i mean i'm charging the tesla I'm gonna be charging solely, so I'm gonna be charging on the uh, solar. I meant to say solar because I'm gonna have the batteries at 100%, and then I'm gonna be bringing in 3,000 watts on the solar. So why not use that for the car? You know, I'll just be using that 3,000 watts coming in from the solar to charge the car instead of taking from the battery. Now, when I'm at work, when I have to work the five days that I have to work, I'm gonna have it charging overnight, and then I'm gonna be using you know, the batteries to charge the Tesla. So I'm gonna show y'all the ground mount that I built outside and then I'm gonna end this video. See y'all outside. All right, so I'm back outside and I'm showing y'all, this is my backyard ground mount, solar ground mount. So right now it's getting all the sun, you know, around two, it's around two o'clock, I believe. And usually around two o'clock, the one in the front start getting a little shade. So I'm gonna have to go and cut some trees down so we can stop getting that shade. But, uh, this is the backyard ground mount that I hooked up. It's nine 425 watt panels. So I just wanted to show y'all this, man. I'm gonna end this video. Let me get my test running. I get, I believe I get one EG4 inverter tomorrow and then the other one might come the day after because I do have, uh, they did send them separately for some reason. They didn't send them together. So I'll be spending half my night when I get off work hooking up uh, hooking up the eg4 batteries i gotta run breakers this time solar breakers 500 volt solar breakers because you know 500 volts is a lot so i'm gonna put a breaker on there so i can disconnect when i have to uh work on the solar panel so all right so i'll see y'all in my next video 
all right guys so i wanted to show y'all something right now i'm charging the tesla this is not a test it's just i'm charging it up a little bit let me bring y'all in so we still got about 900 watts coming in on the solar side 17 amps 160 volts all right so the car is pulling five point 5.4 kilowatts and like i said we still got a lot of solar coming in well not a lot about a thousand watts on the uh grow wide inverter but if you can see in two hours and 57 minutes which we're bringing in night we're bringing out 96 amp which is right at the limit of 100 amp hour battery you know so we right at that limit so we're gonna keep it right there but anyway i'm only charging it up to like 40 let me say 46% or 45%. And if the battery was at 99 or 100% right now, it wouldn't be having this issue. I mean, I wouldn't really say an issue, but it will probably take 20% out of the battery just to charge it up to 50%, charge the car up to 50%. So, you know, these wires getting a little hot definitely getting a little hot when i yesterday i was bringing in 8,000 watts charging the car at like 170 amps and it was getting real real hot so you got to be careful definitely be careful on you know what type of wires like battery term terminals you're using because they will get hot very hot so you want to go with the thickest wire possible you know if you're gonna be charging the car but we'll run that test later i was just you know coming back to show y'all this before i end my video and uh the next time y'all will see me is when i bring out the i mean when i install the eg4 inverters and i'm gonna go with thicker wire i'm gonna try to go with thicker wire because i definitely don't want you know thin wire so i'll see y'all in my next video okay so before i end this video i just wanted to show y'all you know at 5k if you can look if you look down there that's that would charge at 100 percent. you see the charge limit 100 percent, and it's pulling 5k out of the inverter it already been put two kilowatt hours in the car battery already and that's at 21 amps i got it at 21 amps at 238 volts but eight hours and 40 minutes to charge that at 100 percent. so it's like charging overnight but you definitely want to have a big battery bank you know putting 40 because i have a 40 kilowatt hour battery bank so me putting 40 back inside the you know 40 i mean me putting 40 kilowatts inside my car is probably gonna get it up to 80 percent so that's why i say you definitely want to keep the batteries charged at 100 percent and charge in the daytime if you can if you can't then you know it's cool when you got a big battery bank it's okay to charge at uh, night. So, all right. I'll see y'all in my next video.